All right, guys. Let me show you my uh, factory I used to auto craft fusion reactors. In. You see, it's here. Um, it's pretty large. I actually, uh, uh, modeled it after a real life building. We can go inside here. You can see this is just my basic processing area. It just processes bulk items. These are industrial grinders. This one has mercury in it for ferrous. See that one's monazit, and another one's bauxite and some other stuff. These are my uh, blast furnaces. You can see it's doing tungsten right now, and it does titanium and uh, chrome as well. This is a vacuum freezer for the tungsten steel. These are my electrolyzers. This one, all it does, like this side, there's four of them here. All it does is process is bauxite, and this one, all it does, it's uh, processes ruby dust to make uh, chrome. But if we go over here, this is the actual cra auto crafting uh, area I use here. Um, those are all deep storage units from Mine Factory Loaded. You can see it has 290. 100 million cobble in that one. Um, see here, there's a crafting terminal that has all all the items here I use. You can see I have like a million bucks I dust. Uh, I get all this input from my uh, mining machine, which I actually showed in another video. You see, I, I this is just import out port. That's just the Emmy controller and all that. But if we take a look back here. See all these test racks I have. What I use these test racks for is to direct all the raw resources to the appropriate spots, like you know, electrolyzers and uh, the industrial uh, grinder with the mercury in it and all that. These are all export buses. This one's Ruby Dust and Ferris Ore. Various machines. Um, that's just quantum tank with steam and tank containment. Go over here on the other side. This is my actual uh, ME assembler chamber. You can see uh, it's just another crafting terminal with all the same stuff as before, but it's also a crafting monitor. You can see I have uh, pretty much all the recipes, or most of them at least, of the recipes in the game, all ME stuff and MFR. And all the Greg Tech machines. I actually made sure to do all the Greg Tech machines. I can craft them. Yeah, I'll show you an example. Let's see here. What's a difficult one? I'll do Quantum Tank. Build that. If I look in the crafting monitor, you can see it's just plugging away at it. Of course, uh, I should show you like a uh, fusion coil. Make one of those. Look at if you look here, you can see it's already making it. Um, I think it takes the longest are these iridium neutron reflectors because they take so many steps and so many materials to build. But it's pretty easy because all I do is press a button and it's crafted by this thing here. Showed you that. Um, I'll show you the processing area for actual fusion reactor components because they actually take a lot to make in any decent amount of time. Uh, this is just more bulk processing because uh, my mining machine has so much input that I just need to have it set up. These are just rotary macerators. The reason why I use, I use a lot of these instead of the overclocked ones is because they require very little energy as long as you keep them on all the time and uh, below this you can see uh, there's levers that apply redstone signal that keeps them on constantly so they're always at max speed this is a uh, centrifuge extractor uh, it extracts uh, rubber and uh, empty cells for me I get rubber from a rubber factory these are just compressors these are just furnaces but uh, they just keep up with whatever I put in. And now for the fast machines. That's just, um, this is just a matter fabricate. I just put it here for some reason. But 
here are the actual machines that process the uh, stuff for Fusion Reactor. You see in these MU interfaces I have all the plates because there's a plate bender, mass rater for uh, stuff that I require on demand instead of just auto process. Assembly machine. These are all maxed overclocked, including Greg Tech machines. These have four overclockers, each of them. Um, you'll see how fast they are when I go on the other side, because I actually have um, maxed overclocked ones set up to auto process. These are rolling machines. Uh, this is uh, this just makes scrap. These are fabricators. These make this makes cells when requests it. We can see it makes uh, alloy ingots and the nichrome coils you need for reactors and all that. This is actually powers that room and this room. You can see it uses a lot of power. These are uh, superconductor wires from Greg Tech because they can put uh, they can handle high voltages. I have four AESUs here. Uh, I use these instead of uh, IDSUs because they're cheaper and uh, you see uh, they can output 2048 whereas the IDSU I think I'll put something different but I don't know these are just cheaper and they do the same thing so I just use those these instead it's four plasma generators these are all uh, pointing 2048 so it's 8192 going uh, EU a tick going through these uh, superconductor cables here um, those are obviously powered by superconductor cables too but they're underneath the floor it's another plate bending machine this is for this all this does is I mean it has lithium in here but I don't set it to auto process it'll make beryllium this is yeah this does the same thing all it does is electrolyzes beryllium all day long you can see it just finished the process is the reason why I apply so much so much in you is because these are overclocked and when they're maxed overclocked they require if it's a machine that requires 128 EU a tick constantly, if you put max overclockers, it requires 8192 EU a tick. Um, you see these electrolyzers, it looks slow, but this is a lot faster than what the normal electrolyzer does. This usually takes 65 seconds. You can see it takes a lot less than that at higher energy costs, of course. This is the macerator. Any ender pearls I get from ender pearl farm I have immediately gets sent into this, and then the dust immediately gets sent to that one. This is a plate bending machine. You can see, you can see how it's maxed overclocked because how fast it's processing it. Um, I have it just turn all the copper I have into these copper plates, and this compressor will automatically take them and turn them into dense copper plates. I have these things do it automatically, constantly, nonstop because that's the the biggest uh, choke point I found. Or not choke point, but a bottleneck I found in uh, making fusion reactor components is waiting for dense copper plates and beryllium cells. Uh, so I had it set to do it constantly, so I don't have to sit there and wait for them when I need them. You can see here I do a dense copper plate at 45,000, and now if I search for beryllium, I have 3,000 beryllium cells. These are recyclers. I have nine of them. Um, these only get high voltage because uh, ten is the max upgrades you can get on them. So high voltage is the only thing you need. This is as fast as they go. One uh, one process per tick. I have nine of them. All they do is take my cobblestone from my mining machine. You can see they haven't even made made a dent because this keeps climbing. I would have to build a whole bunch of max overclock ones to deal with all this cobblestone so there's that alright and now since I showed you those I'll show you a fusion reactors might as well cut to the chase right go down here this is my underwater fusion reactor I have two of them down here I have two of them in another place too. See, these are the two the rings. I I have I intentionally made, wanted to make four of them. However, when I tried to interleague the other two, 
they they wouldn't start. So I had to put them somewhere else because I didn't have enough room for to space them out in here. These are ATD fusions. They just you do uh, the tritium deuterium processing. See here, I have uh, I produce surplus of uh, tritium and deuterium. Um, these are all quantum tanks that hold them. Uh, I have these trans. All uh, these these things, all they do is they just turn the deuterium cells and tritium cells into a liquid form. Uh, I don't just have two. I actually have eight, uh, well actually ten, four, five of them each, and they don't keep up. See, this is just the helium plasma I stored. I have what, 40 uh, million millibuckets, which is 40,000 buckets. And now, where I get all the resources to operate the fusion reactors. Go out here. I have to go to another because that's where it is. I'm gonna walk over to my. Uh... This is my old base. Oh yeah, actually, uh, I gutted this. It used to be a barrel sorting area, but I'm in the process of putting it all in my main system. So this is. Where I put all the two reactors. There's two here. And that's just the process to uh, build these. And for what fuels these? Show you, it's in another. Alright, I'm in another now. This is my nether hub. I have, uh, Books they need different ages there. It's just a long, long hallway to where I need to go. And this is it. I gotta wait for these to load because the way Greg Tech loads its machines in. And you can see you. Um, I can just explain right now. These are the industrial centrifuges, these make deuterium, or no, these, yes, these make deuterium from hydrogen, and then there's a lot of them. And these make uh, deuterium from, uh, or these make tritium from the deuterium, these uh, industrial centrifuges. All in all, there's almost 600 of them. These are obviously the electrolyzers that make uh, hydrogen, just judging by the way they have water loading up. Those are steam boilers, which I just used for to fill up that empty space. But I actually use that steam, but that's the real reason I built them here, is just to fill the space. The way I have these powered, um, oh, actually, I should explain these. These are the routers. All they do is it's just so I could place all these adjacently without using tons of uh, item transferring machines. Is um, they, they feed the cells in required cells in the bottom and then take them off the top. That's all those routers do. And uh, this one's the same thing with electrolyzers, but what it does is uh, it fills it with cells and that one takes them all out. And the way it power these is a little bit different. Each one of these, each bay of these 16 centrifuges, each bay of 16 centrifuges, has transformer upgrades on them, so I can feed them with MMS, MFSUs. Each 16 has uh, one MFSU for uh, for each row. And uh, let's see here. Below here is the power system. That superconductor wire um, attached to each superconductor wire. Oh yeah, I'll just show you. Attached to each superconductor wire here is a uh, HB transformer, which takes the high voltage, or not the high voltage, the extreme voltage, and turns it into high voltage so the MFSUs can take it. Uh, 
The reason why I use the superconductor wires is because I have, I think, 10 plasma generators. You can see five of them down here. Provides the energy for the electrolyzers. Oh yeah, for the electrolyzers, it's different than the uh, centrifuges because they require higher voltage. They require 128. So each MFSU for these electrolyzers has only each MFSU for these electrolyzers has four. So one for one MFSU for each bank of four electrolyzers. I painted the the cable, each row of cable separate uh, separate colors, well alternating colors, just so they don't connect. Just to save on uh, the packet uh, packet routing, the EU packet routing. See, I have some more plasma generators over here, I'm feeding this whole system. Here. I usually don't touch that stuff. So I don't have a trapdoor or something going down there. Oh, shut up, guests. Now, that's about it. I think I showed you everything. If I miss something, uh, let me know. If you if you guys uh, know of a way for me to. Uh, I don't know about improve, but make it a little bit more efficient or a better way. Instead of using, uh, I think that has over 80 or something, or 70, or something like that, uh, MFSUs. If you can find a way where I don't have to mix so many FSUs, that would, that would be great. But, um, other than that, you can. Thanks for watching.